Today's lesson will be looking at QMI 1500 exam preparation. The topic for today is functions lesson 101. Let us start. For exam preparation, we'll be going through questions that are in the past question papers. We'll randomly choose questions from past question papers and then answer them. We will be focusing on two to three questions just to avoid the lesson video being too long and then the type of questions will be based on one chapter so you'll never find a lesson video that contains a mixed number of questions from different chapters as you can see these questions are basically based on functions so question 16 says consider the quadratic equation y is equals to 7x squared minus 3x plus 5. The turning point is found at we are given these options. So we are looking for a turning point of this quadratic equation or quadratic function. Now remember that a quadratic function has a shape like this. It's either it can be facing up or facing down. So what we are looking for is this point here. But remember that if the value of A is positive, we are looking at this shape that is facing up. So you are looking for this point here. Then we are given these options. Now there are many ways to find the turning point of a quadratic function, but we are going to use the easiest which is the derivative you should know that the first derivative of a quadratic equation will assist us to find the turning point the second derivative is the point of inflation so what we need to do we need to find the first derivative in order to get the x coordinate of the turning point So our equation is this one. So if you can find the first derivative and solve for x coordinate of the turning point, it will be simple for us to find the y coordinate of the turning point. Now we are going to take the first derivative and equate it to equals to zero. So the first derivative, we are going to use power rule, seven multiplied by two, we get 14x and then we have this one here 1 multiplied by this negative 3 it's negative 3 and then 1 minus 1 we are going to have 0 so x to the power 0 will give us 1 which 1 multiplied by 3 is simply this and then we know that a derivative of a constant number is 0 so this will be equal to 0 having our equation we have something like this then solving for x we are going to find the x coordinate of the turning point so we transpose this to the other side we are going to have 3 is equals to 14 x divided by 14 both sides our x will be equals to 3 over 14 so this is the x coordinate of the turning point looking at this we already have our x as um, 3 over 14. So now we are looking for y. How do we find the y coordinate of the turning point? We use our equation, the original one. Then where we see x, we can substitute by the x coordinate. You should know this let's say we have this point here it's one is two y and then we are looking for the y value of this point if you have the x value you can use this function simply where you see x you substitute by this x coordinate and then it will give you the y coordinate of that particular point so that is what we are going to be that is why that is what we are doing now where we see x we substitute by 3 over 14 squared minus 3 3 over 14 plus 5 
then we find that our y is 131 over 28. So looking at this, this is an improper fraction and we can see that looking at our options, it is not visible enough. We have mixed fractions. So let us go ahead and work the mixed fraction of this and then we'll find our correct option. So how do we quickly find the mixed fraction? So it's 28 as our denominator and 131 as our numerator. The reason why we say it's an improper fraction is because we have a bigger number over a smaller number. That is why we say it's an improper fraction. So we check how many times does 28 into 131. It goes four times. So we write that four. And remember, there's a remainder. We write that four. Just know that the denominator will always be um, part of our answer, this denominator here. And then we need to work out the remainder. How do you find the remainder? 28 multiplied by 4, we are going to get 112. So simply take this number and minus 112. So 131 minus 112, we will get 19. So this is the same as this. If this is a mixed fraction, then this is an improper fraction. You can see now that our numerator is smaller than the denominator. There is a lesson video whereby we look at practice questions of improper to mixed fraction. If it happens that you don't understand this well. So let us look at our options. Before we do that, our turning point is 3 over 14, 4, 19 over 28. So option two is the correct one. I hope you can see this. Let us go to question 17. Question 17 says consider the quadratic equation y is equal to negative 3x squared plus 5x plus 7. The x intercepts. There are many ways in which we can solve this we can use factor method, we can use quadratic equation, we can use completing a square. But let us go ahead and use a quadratic equation. So in order to get um, x intercept, we let y to be 0. We let y to be 0. So when we see y, we substitute by 0. then we can see that this is our A, this is our B, this is our C. So using quadratic equation, all over to A, we can quickly find the correct option. So from here, let us substitute x is equal to negative, our b is 5 plus minus square root of, we have 5 squared minus 4, a is negative 3, c is 7 all over 2, our a is negative 3. So we just need to simplify and then we'll be good to go. So the first bracket that we'll be simplifying is this one. We are going to have negative 5. And then we have plus minus Inside the bracket, we have 20, 
5 minus this 3 multiplied by, I mean negative 3 multiplied by 7, we have negative 21. Then all over 2 multiplied by negative 3, it's negative 6. Let us further simplify this. Negative 5 plus minus square root of, um, we have negative 4 multiplied by negative 21, it will give us 84. So it will be 25 plus 84, the answer is 109, all over negative 6. So we cannot simplify any further from here. Let us go to our options. So the best option is option 4. So option 4 is the correct option. And then we have the last two questions. Let us quickly go through them. So we have this function here, which is question um, 16 and 17. So the question says determine the coordinate of A looking at this. So you can see that is the same as the previous one because looking at A is the turning point. So how do you find the turning point from looking at the function? You can go ahead and pause the video and try to work this out and play the video to verify. So to quickly find the derivative of this, you are going to get uh, 2x minus 2, which is equal to 0. So we have 0 is equal to 2x minus 2. Transposing this to the other side, we have 2 is equal to 2x divided by 2 both sides. Going to x is equal to 1. So this is the x coordinate of the turning point. Now substituting it onto the original equation, we are going to have y is equal to uh, it's 1 squared minus 2, 1 minus 3. We get that y is equal to negative 4. So the point, the coordinate of a is 1 maps negative 4. So that is option, here it is, option 1. Now looking at question 17, it says determine the coordinate of point C and D. So we are looking at the X coordinates. In order to find the X coordinates, we need to take this function and we solve for X. To find the x coordinates, we let y to be 0. So we have 0, it's equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. So you can use factor method to find this. Two numbers, you multiply them, they give you negative 3. We add them, they give us negative 2. So we have negative 3 multiplied by 1, 1 multiplied by negative, which are negative 1 multiplied by 3. So these are the two factors, or let me say two possible factors. So 3 multiplied, I mean negative 3 multiplied by 1, it will give us negative 3. But is negative 3 plus 1 equals 2? Yes, it is. So you can see when you add the 2, we get negative 2. When you multiply the 2, we get negative 3. These ones cannot be our factors because if you can multiply the two, so negative one multiplied by three, it will give us negative three, which this is satisfied. And then um, negative one plus three, it will give us positive two, which does not satisfy this. So the correct factors, these ones, so just put negative three and one. Then from here, you can go ahead and solve for x. Uh, x plus 1 is equal to 0, and then x is equal to a 3, or x is equal to negative 1. So the x intercepts, we have 
3 maps this 0 or we can say the 0 then the second x-intercept is negative 1 maps 0 now let us look at our options actually done with this question so we said if 3 maps 0 and negative 1 maps 0 so the correct option is this one option 3 so basically this is how we solve some of these questions and on the next lesson video we'll continue with the exam preparation whereby we'll be looking at three to four questions again it might be the same chapter or a different chapter that's it for this lesson video this is Wahula SJ thank you very much